Well, I got some good news. We hit number 63 on the charts for podcast. Are you serious? Like outdoor podcasts. And that's not just that's not just duck hunting. It's waterfowl. It's waterfowl, big game, um, hiking, climbing, like any outdoor wilderness deal. We hit 63 on the charts. Is so, that right? Yeah. So thank the you guys. The MVM show? Yeah, the MVM show. Is, is that like national or, or what? Yeah, it's... Uh, no, it's... Um, is that I believe it's global. Global. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, That's I think amazing. it is. I don't... I mean, I've seen... T- I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of podcasts, and you can scroll through and just see what, you know, where everybody's at. That's awesome. Now, it does fluc- it fluctuates mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think that's the lowest we got. I seen some others said we were at fifty one at one point, but anyways, yeah, we're. I mean, hmm. we're we're ahead of a lot of people. You'd be surprised, you know. Meat eaters like always like number one through ten because they have several different ones. But other than that, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of big names we're ahead. So that is thanks to you guys, the listeners that are downloading and uh, commenting. The big thing for me, and I always try to say, is if you guys can uh, write a review. That actually helps that too. Like if you go in there, write a review and rate it on Apple Podcast. If you listen on there, if you go give it one or two or three or four or five stars and then you go in there and comment and say, hey, something about the show or whatever, that really helps it too. So anyways, thank you guys for that. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the MVM show on YouTube because uh, we're trying to hit a thousand subs on that so we can actually start making some money. We do have a new sponsor for the show. We'll get to that in a second. So you'll hear about that, but uh, hey, if you got anybody out there you wanting to get your name out there, we'll be more than happy to have you on the show. So anyways, a little bit about what's going on right now for me. Um, last night, it was kind of funny because um, so we had that major rainstorm, you know, uh, what was that? Was it a week ago now? Something. Something like, like that. that. Yeah, I think it was like last Sunday, not this one yesterday, but last Sunday. And I know we got an inch and 34 hundredths here at the house wow. is what we got right here at my house. And I know a lot of people got between two and four inches up farther north. That's farther north you went. Anyways, with that, where we're at in the grasslands, basically, and you know this, you've been here all this time, just like me and longer. <laughs> but uh, you Slightly. know the fog, the fog that we deal with. Right. And um, so at work two days ago, Let's see. Was that the first fog? I can't remember if that was the first fog. Was it two days ago or three? I think it was my first shift. I think it was Thursday. I'm on night shifts. The fog starts... It looks like it's going to get foggy. Like, it's going to go down. So, and there's ways as a pilot we can look at that, you know, and make sure we're not stuck out in it because the FAA has regulations for what we can fly and take patients. Whether it's medical, crop dusting, whatever, I'm flying and that's just the way it is. Anyways... um, I'm looking at the TAF, which is like a an outlook that pilots like to look at, and it can tell you kind of what's going to happen. It's not a for sure thing, but it's pretty close. And when we get fog, what that is is it's the dew point because there's a temperature. At what temperature does dew basically settle? So there's a dew point, and it could be 59 degrees, 40 degrees, whatever it is. And then you got your temperature. And when that spreads, so you got your dew point temp and you got your outside temp, and when those match and get the same, that's when you get fog. And once you get it within about three degrees difference, because what they'll do is they'll start closing together like this, and then they'll be 61 and 61 or whatever they are. When they get about within three degrees, you know it's about to go down because it's dropping, right? And so that is a big indicator. Well, anyways, it was very obvious we were going to get fog, and I was looking at it and like, okay, it's going to go down. Well, anyways... We got like three calls, but we got canceled. And I was going to, I accepted them. So we were in, this is like 7.15 at night, and I accepted them. Well, they, luckily they got canceled because we would have been out flying and then taking the person to the hospital and then coming back, and it would have went down before I got back. It literally went from 10-mile visibility to two miles, which is under the regulations to fly. So we would either we would have got stuck at the hospital. The helicopter would have to stay there. We had to Uber back. And I was like, oh, man, I'm glad. I, you know, it was kind of a little learning curve because I'd flown around this fog for fi- almost 15 years. And I'm not in it, but like dealing with it as a pilot. And I was like, man, 
I kind of learned something today. I thought I had the fog figured out and stuff, but that came down like it came down like three hours earlier than it said it was going to. So I could have got myself in a really bad situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I learned a lesson there that I haven't learned something new. You learn all the time, right? Well, then the next night, it did the same thing as far as the temperature dew point spread, but it never fogged up. But I turned calls down all night because I was like, I'm not taking a chance, like getting us stuck in it or going IFR. And then, it, yeah, it'd just be bad. You could actually lose your job if you end up flying and that does that. So then last night, so this sorry, long story short, last night it was saying the same thing. I'm like, it ain't going to fog up tonight, though, because it's overcast it's coming in. It's going to probably rain today, maybe this afternoon or whatever. And I'm like, it's not going to it's not going to do it. Well, we did do a call. This kid ended up getting hit by a car. He wasn't real young, but it wasn't too fast either. I think they were only, you know, they were probably trick-or-treating or doing something because of Halloween. Got hit about going about 10, super concussed. He was just talking out of his mind the whole flight to Children's. So he's he'll be fine, I'm sure. But uh, anyways, um, we did that call. That was right at the beginning of the shift. Well, at 4 o'clock this morning, I got a call. I almost took it. Like, I almost took it. And I looked at the all my stuff, as the pilot looks at, and I was looking at it, and I was like, I almost said yes. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna decline this. I'm going to decline this. It looks like we're going to about to go down for fog. Went back to sleep, got up at 6 or 5.45, got up, fogged. Mm. So if we would have took that call, we would have been stuck again and, I, and maybe get in trouble for, it's like, man. Mm. So... Things have changed with the fog. Has it? Have you noticed that? As far as how much fog we get? How much fog we get? We used to get it for weeks on end, right? I know. And uh, so I I grew up in Oregon. Uh -huh. And Did in you the, guys ever get fog? Or are you just kind oh, of that, yeah. like, well, socked in? It's very similar, only the Willamette Valley in Oregon, uh, you know, basically goes from Salem, Oregon to uh, Eugene, Oregon, mm -hmm. and then from the, the coast range to the Cascades. So it's mostly all agriculture like this in the San Joaquin Valley, but the San Joaquin Valley is like the largest valley. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if it's in the world or whatever, Thanks. but it's one of the big bread basket. And by the way, he, my dad's born and raised in Oregon. So yeah. So I was born and raised in Oregon. And, uh, so I grew up in the Willamette Valley. So there's, uh, actually elevation mm -hmm. is very similar to what it is here. And uh, so anyway, it just rained a lot. It had uh, 42 inches of rain average in the Willamette Valley. Which is and my dad was a farmer, so I remember, you know, I would, uh, you know, help out with the ryegrass crops and uh -huh. driving machinery. And sometimes it always seemed like when we were cutting the ryegrass, which is basically in this area the only place that grows that particular type of grass seed, uh -huh. which is for lawns and stuff like that, it was always raining. And I can't tell you how many times that I uh, windrowed, what they call windrowed, which is basically cutting the grass and, and goes into a, a rose, that it would it would be raining, mm. you know, off and on. One time in particular, my dad, I felt really, I was young, but I, kn I, I felt his pain because he got very quiet. You know, Grant's mm. how he is, you know, how he was. And uh, basically, he lost his whole crop, his whole income for the entire, you know, if you don't make it during that right. time, certain time right there, well, what happened is it rained and it never stopped. It's just like the whole time. So what happened is all those uh, rows of, of grass seed, uh, all of a sudden you started having it sprouting oh. and it was sprouting up through those rows. And I remember that during that time, my dad basically, you know, lost all his income for that year because of that right there. And we yeah. had to take the tractor and mow those rows up. And I can only imagine now looking back on it, you have a family and the pain that he must have went through knowing that literally his whole income, we're spending more time and money to mow that all up. Even though you already lost, you're a big it's loss. You're a total loss. Yeah. Now it's a loss on top of it. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it, that set him back bad. And that, you know, uh, but anyway, so long story short about the fog, the fog there was very similar to the fog here, even though we, on average, I think used to get what, 11 or 12 inches of rain fall mm -hmm. in average. the San, Qua San Joaquin Valley. And what's mm -hmm. so crazy is where I grew up, when I first moved here, you know, 
I was shocked that they could have all this agriculture because when you think of California, I don't know about anybody else, but I didn't think of California <laughs> as this big agricultural place. Didn't really even know, you know? And so we had a lot of fog growing up, major fog. And so when I moved down here, and then you, you there's basically very few rivers compared to what yeah, I grew oh, up right. in. And we always dealt with flooding and stuff like that. Willamette River, you know, the Columbia River's up there. The San Am Rivers are up there. And you always de dealt with uh, flooding, but the fog was super bad uh, at certain times of the year. And then I come down here, mm -hmm. and as you know, Highway 99 uh, used to have, uh, there in Livingston area, uh, it used to have on ramp. I mean, like, not on ramps. Oh, yeah, but I remember that. People would cro they could cross, it, uh, cross the road. And I can't even tell you how many pileups that happened every year because the fog was so bad. Mm. And, uh, you know, because you couldn't see the traffic coming and you basically had to go across to go either, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it would be if, if you were on the one side, you'd have to, to go north or the other side to go south. You're crossing traffic and you basically can't see. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was super bad. And but it hasn't been nearly as foggy. No, as and as I it think has. it's because we haven't hardly had the rain either. I think that's what it is, totally. Because as soon as that rain hits, I was trying to tell someone, some of the nurse and medic last night. I was giving kind of schooling them up a little bit about they're from L.A. Mm -hmm. originally. They've moved this way, so they have no clue how what this weather can do and what the fog does versus how the rain does, and then when the fog comes, you know, whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's good to know because, I, I, you know, I'm trying to protect them. Right, right. We, we all go to training as pilots, but doesn't mean every pilot makes good decisions either. And right. we all make mistakes. But I said, just to cover your base, if I'm not here or there's some new pilot that comes in and has no clue, you guys need this knowledge to protect yourselves and say, right. hey, I'm not. Because they can turn it down. Like, even though the pilot says, yeah, let's go. Let's take the call. The medic or the nurse can say, I'm not comfortable. I'm not doing this flight. Mm -hmm. And then that shuts it all down. It's three Three to go, one to say no. So is that kind of the motto? Like, we need all three of us to agree we're taking this, and only one person it takes to say no, and you don't go. But anyways. It, this morning, it was funny because uh, I'm really intensifying what I'm doing. Yesterday, I was 66. It was my birthday, yeah, October birthday. 31st. And uh, anyway, so for the last five months, I've really been, like, stepping up my game, like, mm -hmm. big time. And going with Thomas yeah. really even Kicked just that drive. Home, yeah, that drive. And then... Mm -hmm you know, uh, paying attention to David Goggins and Cam yeah, yeah. Haynes and all that because Cam Haynes loves, I mean, he he loves what he does, and those are the very same things that I mm -hmm. I love. I'm just older than him right, right, right. Now. And so They're, they're but, not young whippersnappers either. No, though. I mean, Cam, I don't I know how. I think Cam's in the 50s. He's in the 50s 50, yeah. for sure. Oh, I don't yeah. know about Goggins. Last time I, I, I looked, he was 51, <clears> but <throat> I don't know what he is now. But anyway, they were, he really inspired yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh I think he has an awesome attitude and everything, and I love bow hunting and all yep. that. But you know, life throws you a curve here and there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you're you're not able to do it. And that curve happened to me in oh eight and nine mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. whole real estate fiasco. Right. And uh, anyway, so there was a reason I was going to say that. Oh, what it was this morning, I was stretching, and uh, got out of bed and I was stretching, and uh, so then. Mom got up and and I was talking, telling her. I go, you know, a lot of people don't know this probably that watch your podcast. Maybe they've never seen the inside of your helicopter mm -hmm. that you fly as a medevac. Mm -hmm. We have. We went there to visit mm -hmm. you that time, and uh, it's unbelievable <laughs> the how tight a fit it really is. Mm -hmm. You know, because I I see you as a pilot sitting there, and then. Your uh, the gurney or whatever mm -hmm. you guys call it is r literally right beside mm -hmm. you, right? Yeah, on my left side, yeah. On your left side? Okay, I thought it was on your right side. Anyway, left side. So it's super close to you. Mm -hmm. Now, is the head towards you or towards the them? Towards them. Towards so the them. Feet are, the, like from the knees down to the feet is all right there by me. How how far would you say it is? Like that far? That yeah, far? like... That far. <laughs> eight inches. <laughs> That's crazy, really. So... I've had some you, crazy stuff happen to you. Yeah, I mean, when you really, if you have, you have to see it to really get this. Because yeah. I mean, 
it's incredible. You're thinking you've got the life of everybody in basically in your hands, you know, flying the helicopter. And you told me that there's been a few times that some guys, I guess they were on drugs or mm -hmm. something, were acting pretty crazy. Yeah. And you strap them in, though, right? They do, but they'll somehow weasel their way out and start kicking you. Yeah. <laughs> and so here you are, right down by the feet. That could be some of the, you know, deadliest things to try to do damage on you or whatever. Yeah. And I was just telling mom, I said, really, when you stop and think about it, you know, we take things for granted sometimes, but that lifestyle, that occupation, what you do, you know, it must be pretty much a rush to know that you're going to help somebody, that somebody like that boy last night was injured, and uh, you're, you're flying in there, and it's night, and everything's lit up, and you got to watch out for all these different things. Then you're dealing with fog. And then on top of that, you're coming in, and there's probably a lot of people around mm -hmm. there. So you got to be careful where you're landing. And it must be kind of a rush to do that, to go in and just land like mm -hmm. that. And so I was saying, that's got to be a pretty amazing thing to really do, experience yeah. that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's... <laughs> Yep. Nights are definitely a different beast. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> because you're going, like, we landed on a practice football field next to the main football field. And it was, it just depends. Sometimes it's lit up and traffic's backed up for miles. And then sometimes you go in places where you're, uh, you're landing in a dark hole. It was kind of a dark hole, but we got night vision goggles too, you know, so that's, uh -huh. a, that's a major factor. But even then, you still got to do your recon and look in there and see what wires are crossing this and that because, I mean... You can't be safe enough. You know, Dude, you just can't. So was there like a big crowd of people? Not last night, because that's where we rendezvoused at that, that practice field to get away from where it happened. Because a lot of times it's in town, like tight in the city. We were still in the city, basically. But a pra practice football field is big enough to like, get mm -hmm. us in there and be safe and not have all those people around. Because right, right. I guess the mo obviously the mom and them were freaking out. But he, like I said, I mean, he's very fortunate. Because I've seen a lot. I mean, I've... The majority of the time, it's really, really bad. But anytime people have head injuries like that, especially being hit, you're going to fly them. Because they could take him by ambulance, but you don't know if he's bleeding in the brain stuff. You just never know those kind of things. So, like, did he take a direct hit from a car? Or did he... Yeah, I guess they hit him at the front of his car. Ooh. I don't know if he was just, I don't know what he was doing. I don't so know. This and was you know what's crazy? A... He's all Titus, screaming Titus. And we're like, who did? The kid? Yeah. Really? And, and we're like, what in the world? They, they were kind of <laughs> tripping How'd out. How'd that happen? His brother. No. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What's the so, chance I of that? That was trippy. I, there's, I wish I'd write a book. I, I really should, wish seriously. I should. I need to log every call we do, even if they're an eventful. Just log it down. And this was not supposed that to. That must have been a little, I don't know, freaky. Because well, I thought or... I heard it at first, too, and I was like, nah. And then they're like, he's saying your name. And I go, what? Yeah, it was weird. It was oh, weird. Oh, wow. So he was he was delirious or what? He had a concussion. He's just tripping out. Like, he was just talking about, you know, some people get quiet. Some get people get chatty. I remember I had one. I was walking out in Timbuktu. I didn't even know where I was or what I was doing, playing football or whatever, you know? Yeah. So so what happens in, then you landed in this uh, area that's kind of is a good area to land in. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, there's trees all around and there's goalposts from the practice and stuff like that. But I mean, it's. For me, it's plenty of room. I mean, yeah, helicopter can get in a lot tighter stuff than you think. Do you? So you are responsible for the helicopter because you're a pilot. So you stay there, right? Yeah, I keep it running. Like on, on a scene call, we just stay. This was not supposed to be about this podcast, <laughs> so that's okay. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> that's though, pretty, that's what, okay. what he does. But um, yeah, we went in, landed, uh, and like on scene calls, I keep it running. So the helicopter stays running. I just go down to idle. You know. And we'll all aisle there, and they're usually back in the helicopter loading in less than ten minutes. I've seen it quicker than that. It's pretty, it's pretty quick. Do they get in a vehicle and go there, or they run? To no, we're landing right by the ground ambulance. Like so, wherever we land, the ground ambulance pulls up with the patient. They get out, walk oh, over there, and I then they you. journey them out, okay, and then you. load them in the helicopter, and then we take off. Uh, okay. And we go depending, like if it's if it's for the most part, if they're seventeen or under, we're taking the Valley Children's Hospital in Madera. That's just that's just what you're gonna do. And he did tell me if they have signs of puberty. One of the medic told me last last night, but I was like, man, I don't think I've ever not taken them to children's if they're a minor. But he said if they show signs of maturity or uh, puberty or whatever, that they 
they can technically be treated as an adult and taken to a near facility. So really what that depends on is how life-threatening it is. If they're like coding or going to not make it or whatever, we're going to go the nearest level one trauma center, you know. Mm. But this kid, again, this kid was whatever. He was um, just basically his concussion. But I mean, obviously the concern is bleeding on the brain or anything like that, right? You, your kid falls on their baby. I mean, that's a major concern. Mm. You don't want them sleeping or whatever. Mm. But Well, Valley Children's from everything I've seen, in fact, they're Tom, good. Thomas, when he was young, he mm. got nephritis. What is that? It has something to do with the kidneys, I believe. And mm. what happened is I really, really, w me and mom really thought that was shortly after he had that incredible fall down the mountain when we were skiing. Oh, was it? Was that? So he probably That was Bear kidneys. Valley, right? He, I wasn't there on that, but you guys were at Bear. Yeah, so. No, you were there. We vi I videoed it. I know you did, but I wasn't there. Yes, you were because you were standing right, be, right be, by me, and we were laughing when he was falling down the mountain, coming down. The <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I thought that was you, Matt and Thomas. I don't no, think no, I was no. there. You were there. Oh, okay. You were a hundred percent there. Who it, was the fall that you? That, the other one? No, no, no. That was okay. Matt. Okay, huh? this is when. No, this is way before Matt. Okay. Okay. This was Thomas. Probably I don't know. 12 or 13. Oh, yeah. <laughs> leave it up to us just to laugh. And that, that I've skied. We were a, on a black diamond. Yeah. Straight down. I have, I've skied a lot in the past when I was growing up. Mm. Okay. Teenager and so forth. But that fall, I've never seen nothing like it. I've seen it on, uh, you know, some of those Skis special... are flying, poles are flying, beans oh, flying. Oh, I mean, literally, glasses. how far down there did... Pretty much... We're, we're pretty much we're, down, be we're down below him, I waiting think, for him. And we're only, like, halfway down, I think. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's he a literally... Massive... What it was, he's so light, and he hit, you know, a... I don't he know. He just kind of caught air. I think. He, he was going yeah. so fast that he yeah. kind of skis to start floating. Yeah. <laughs> and head over heels. Oh, my goodness. Past us. I'm videoing the whole thing. I got it on a video. And we're laughing. Yeah, and we're laughing. Do you still have that video? Yeah, I still have that oh video. Oh, you that. really should share that video. That is one of the most amazing crashes. But anyway, he's he's going all the way down. And now he's at the bottom, end over end. And we're laughing and he's down. He's he's laying <laughs> People listening down. Listening, probably think we're so sneaking heartless. Yeah. Anyway, but he's laying down there. Remember? And yeah. then there was a. We're still there, and we're looking at him. And then a guy skis up to him to ask if he would if he's come okay. to, if he's okay. Yeah. And as we're as dad and brother are up there laughing. Yeah, up there laughing. So anyway, then we <laughs> skied down to him. But yeah, that could have messed him up. Bad. Oh man! But and I wonder if that did something to his kidneys, like we, bruised him or did something. We talked about that. I would not doubt if it did something I don't either, because shortly after that is he got nephritis, and uh, what happened? You, yeah, you got to look it up. I'm going but, to. Um, and and by the way, the Central Valley is the longest in the United States. It might be in the world, but I didn't look for that. I think it's economy agriculturally. Back in the day, I don't know if it is now, but was like For the, the world, right? in the world, like the fifth largest economy. This in the says the Rift Valley. The way? The largest valley in the world is the Rift Valley in the Mid Atlantic Range in the Atlantic Ocean. Where's that? that be? The Rift, R I F T. Hmm. Yeah. But in, anyway, Thomas, what happened is uh, one morning uh, when he got up, Again, he's a young teenager. What happened? I think he was a young teenager. Yeah. Thomas, and, yeah. Yeah. And so what happened is his face and everything were just totally swelled up. Just his face? Well, he was swelled up more than that. Wow. But you could see it on his face, and he was kind of— well, Was it lupus nephritis? And it's talking about the kidney, inflamed kidneys. Yeah, his inflamed kidney. Oof. It says it is a group of diseases that cause inflammation, swelling of the nephrons— this can reduce your kidney's ability to filter waste from your blood. What, cause, what causes nephritis? Most types of nephritis are caused by your body's immune system reacting to an insult of some sort. Well, there you so go. So there it was. Mm -hmm. So it was, his kidneys were compromised, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, how, much, how, how soon do you think after that it was? Oh, man. It's been too long ago. I don't, I don't really remember. Mm. But it wasn't that long. And me and Mom have talked about that many times, so I know it wasn't that long. But when he got up, it was like you look at him, and all of a sudden, uh, his face was just totally swelled up. And so we took him to the Valley Children's Hospital, and the Valley Children's Hospital did an awesome job with mm. him, you know, kept him there and everything like that. But I, I was really happy with him. And that's been a while, you know. They're that's, good. Yeah. And so he actually was on TV. 
because uh, for whatever reason, there was some news <clears throat> channel or something that came in there and talked to some of the kids. Well, Thomas was one of the kids <laughs> they talked to. And so he was on a, a, a news channel because of that. That's funny. Yeah, but Valley, I, they were, I, I think they're great. Yeah. And they help a lot of kids. They are. And, and, mo- and obviously, people are definitely different towards minors than they are adults, right? Yeah. But I do think, I mean, for the most part, I've never seen a ru- nurse that was really rude there or nothing like that. No. So no. They're, they're good people down there. Yeah. But. So, yeah, it's, you know, we've talked in, a, you know, the past podcast or two mm-hmm. about some of the things that are going on in the medical field. And, uh, you know, we have our opinions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're a little yeah. bit opinionated. But it isn't just because we have this opinion. It's not like we don't research things right. and get different opinions. Some people will watch the liberal news media, and they just believe everything those people yeah. say. But I think the vast majority of the people now have woken up, and they're looking at alternative media mm-hmm. for truth. And they've experienced a lot of things, and it seems like, you know— through this whole thing, how we, people's opinions and free speech has been censored mm-hmm. big time. Big time. And I don't know how deep I want to get in that because I might be a little too, vo- you know, too vocal for some no, people. No, we, stuff, that's some, that, some, we some can't cut like. that off, though. Let me say this first before we go any further. We want to thank Miller Outdoor Adventures for sponsoring this podcast. They're located in northeast Arkansas on the Cache River. And they offer rice and bean field hunts. And they also do duck and snow goose conservation hunts. And what I like about it, and I've said this in the last couple of episodes, is that they do offer <clears throat> guided and unguided hunts. I know some people like guided hunts, and there's some people that like unguided to do it themselves. <clears throat> Me and Thomas are big proponents of that. Like, we like doing stuff ourselves. And so I like that they offer that. Now, let me tell you this. The good news is, and he reached out to me the other day and said, hey, let everybody know that if they mention the MVM show, we will give them $50 off per day per hunter. Well, wow, that's good. Um, if they come out there and hunt. So that's just mention that, mention that you heard about them on here. And uh, very family friendly, friendly, dog friendly. They let you take your dog out there. Um, the unguided hunts are $5, $500 a day. But like he was telling me when we were talking about this, he said, so basically, if you take, uh, let me look here. I don't feel like doing, my brain's not doing the math right now, but he said, so if you have eight people that go on this trip or head out there to go, it's only sixty two fifty a person. Hmm. Because if you're going for per day, I mean, that's dirt cheap. Like, Oh, really? Cheap. That was, you said 500 per day, but that, if you had five people. For the group. D- divide You're, five you're by- getting it for 500 a day. Wow. So you can do one do- for one person five hundred bucks, or you can do five people for a hundred bucks, or you can do eight for sixty two fifty a day. Did they give you a website to check out? Yeah, well, they yes, they have a website. So the website is MillerOutdoorAdventures dot com, and then they have a Facebook page which is Miller Outdoor Adventures N E A. So, hmm. and then uh, let me give you the number if you want to call or text them to book a hunt. It's eight seven zero five eight six three zero zero four. So check them out. That's super reasonable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very. So is this is just duck hunting or goose hunting? Yeah, they do conservation and goose and duck hunts. They like late season and from the very beginning. And they've got a they they are filling up though. I will tell you that they got quite a few dates, but they're also filling up pretty fast too. In fact, I don't think there was a ton left on the conservation hunts, which is something I had looked at possibly doing. Uh, And let me rephrase something. I don't want to get him at me. (laughs) They said, uh, so if the group goes, you're going to knock $50 off that $500, Mm -hmm. not per. Right, right. That doesn't even make sense. So just to reiterate that. But anyways, um, man, I almost feel like we should not go the way we were going to go in this just because of the conversation. Well, let's go in. Let's, Let's not talk about some of these other things. We'll do that in another one that I had mentioned to you. Let's go into the medical and and again, don't hold back. This this is free speech. We can't hold back. Like we're not going to hold back. It is, in fact, if anything it hurt I feel like it hurt maybe has hurt in the past holding back. You know what I mean? So, I got one question on that with that hunt mm-hmm. right there. So, what state was that again? Arkansas. Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And and uh yeah. So, how long have they been doing that, I wonder? I don't. It's been. I don't know if you put that in here. That information. That seems super reasonable. It is. It really is. I don't. They're like if you go on their website, they can tell you how many years they've been doing it. 
They've been doing it. For, it's been around for a long time. So, what time of year is probably the best time of year to go there? I would. I mean, if it's typical like here, which I'm sure it is, is like December. You know, like December, January, and then the conservation goose hunts. Those are always going to be later in the. Those are going to be like. Uh, I mean, unless there's a different. Let me see if I, he said. So explain ex- like February and March. Explain to me conservation hunts. Well, as far as the the goose hunts go, and I say goose. Or geese, snow geese, because they come down and just, just hunt thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And so what, you know, federal government has allowed is us to go in after the main part of season's over later, February, March, when they're all migrated down there. Because all they do is tear up farmer's fields. I mean, they just, they tear it up. They poop in it. They eat it. They're, they're not, they're not, they're basically an obnoxious pest during that time. So they have allowed them to shoot. Um, you can well, I don't know what the limit is there, but like here, you can shoot twenty whites a day. Do you do you know if uh, EDs uh, wanting to charge you <laughs> charge you because they're coming from Canada? Oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> that guy. We were just talking about him this morning. I guess that guy went on. Is it a guy or a girl? Well, we don't know. I, I think, think it's. I think I it's think a girl. It, I it's think a, it's right. a girly guy. If it is anything, <laughs> it's a girly. I guy. I think it is because here. Let's talk about that guy for a second. So, so that guy Barney's going off about this guy. This guy comes on John Teeny's channel and just starts telling him off. And he goes, "I, I, I'm usually not the kind of guy that says stuff." But he goes, "I couldn't take any more." He goes, "I went Barney? off." Barney, yeah, oh, little Barney, join the crowd. I know. And he said he went back and forth with this guy, and finally he said, "I've had it. I'm done. I'm not having another word with you again." I go, Barney. His his uh, little tag name didn't happen to be like E M something, right? And he's like, it was. And so yeah, that guy's an idiot. Now, be, now, I will say there is <laughs> Canadian, you know, people that listen from Canada. So. Oh, I know. Hey, I I had friends uh, growing up. Yeah, I went to. Uh, I do too. I went to boarding school my uh, junior year, uh, <laughs> and and there was a, a girls' dorm and a guys' dorm. And there was several, it was a Mennonite Mm. uh, school Mm. anyway, uh, but there were several, I called them, you know, Canucks. (laughs) (laughs) There were several of them there. Uh, I've hunted in British Columbia for elk. Uh, I've... uh, I've duck hunted. I went through the Alcan Highway. Killed their birds. Through Canada. (laughs) I had a good friend there. and But this guy or a girl, whoever it was, I think it was a girl. No, she, yeah. she, he, he, it, whatever you want to call it, was like thinks that uh, any birds that come into uh, the United States, the United States, that w- we sh- we should pay them a fee. Yeah, I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like they're coming down here and eating all our food. Yeah, we should charge you for <laughs> all the food they're eating. Ed, I called him Ed, uh, and yeah. it, use your imagination what that means. It wasn't because I was calling him Ed. I called him Ed. And uh, in my, I couldn't take it when he started harassing you that one time. It was bad. It was. It was. It was for about was six little, weeks, I, and it was every multiple times a day, every day, every yeah. single day. I mean, I never. I responded once in a nice way, and I never said nothing. But I sure got a kick out of watching you <laughs> and Thomas. <laughs> yeah, it was and funny. Tra- like everybody was going on. Well, that guy. like Thomas, like uh, when you d- when you did that, and he said what he said. I, okay, I don't usually look at comments that right. much. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. but this particular time, he Thomas was going back and forth with uh-huh. him, and then he stopped. But it w- whatever he said, I'm not going to repeat it. But whatever that dude or girl said or whatever, because I, I said you must be a girl. And he never, never, never responded and said, no, I'm a guy. He never said that. And uh, so some of the things that he said is like, this is a chick. I'm serious. And so what happened is I, I had to say my piece. I don't, remember, I don't remember what I said anymore, but I said it nicely, but as nice as I could or whatever. But it started a whole thing. And then because of what he was saying to me, now Thomas is getting back at it. And we were kind of hammering this person. It, yeah. It, it was pretty funny. I don't even know. Do you have any access to what that? I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, it was so. too funny. It's like this this Isn't guy, this girl guy. I wonder guy if they erased all their comments. Is, is messed oh, up. Oh, you know what? I blocked them uh-huh. finally. I don't do. Actually, wait. Never mind. Never mind. I take that back. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> it was too funny. So, oh, man. I should probably just. Okay, so. Now listen to this, guys. So what you can do on your channel, you can block people and what they say, but 
I don't do that. Even if they're talking bad about us, they I don't do that. I could care less. Yeah. Let it fly. <clears throat> if anything, comments help the channel and push the videos out, and the, which is what it did on this video. But it was so it was obnoxious to me. It had been going on for weeks, and it's two or three times a day, and I'm getting these notifications about this, and I'm like, dude, that's enough. That's enough. Like I'm I don't. People can be negative all they want. It's not going to affect me. But I don't want to also be around negative people, no, right? Or right. see negative things every single day, all day long. Yeah, exactly. Whether or not you say it doesn't bother you, it is going to your subconscious. So I was like, I don't need that in my life right now. I was, you know, other stuff was going on. I was like, I don't want this right now. So EM, yeah, EM was their little, <laughs> here's one of your. <laughs> I always call here's them ED. Here's one of your comments. Just another lip Canuck. <laughs> oh, a what? A what? A Canuck. Uh, yeah. Canuck, yeah. whatever. Build a wall. Keep your ducks out of our airspace and off our grasslands. <laughs> the reason ducks fly south each fall is to escape your liberal country. Who voted you your boy Chrome Prime Minister? <laughs> well, we won't read it for, but anyways, I mean nothing that wasn't. Yeah. Honestly, I, I I would have to unblock them, I guess, to see their comments. But it wasn't. Actually, I'll tell you. Go ahead. You can say whatever. I'm gonna. <clears throat> he was. I think he. I think he or she was copy and pasting. And doing it because everybody, all the other flyways guys were getting it too. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm just, thinking, like, okay, stop and think about this. Like, is this this is your mission in life, or mm -hmm. what? Like, seriously, you well, have no, yeah. you have nothing to say to me yeah. of any value, and what you're doing uh, is is wasting your time. Yep. It's your life, and you only got one life, and this person is really stuck on the fact that we need to be paying them because those birds are going up there and, uh, you know, they have them for a certain amount of time or right. they're born there or whatever. But like I said, probably how many months, how many months are they actually <coughs> down here and actually feeding and, and doing all that they do all winter long? I mean, I would say the majority. Five, six months, right? Yeah. At least. I shouldn't say the majority, but yeah, quite a bit. Five or six months. Mm -hmm. So from, yeah, from... You know, Washington, I mean, I'm just saying on the, the Pacific Flyway, you yeah. know, Washington, uh, why can't I think Oregon, of Oregon, California, and then Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. So it's months. And, so and then they go down there. And what happens is they go down there into Mexico and then they just slaughter the birds. Like their, their limit, they don't really have, they have limits, but they're super high. Like you can shoot like 30 pintails where we can shoot one. Are you serious? Yeah. And it's like, I just, don't, that, I couldn't that do that. That don't seem. It right. ain't right, right? Yeah, like uh, to me, I mean, well, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. But like I was telling Travis, I go, dude, I don't think I could do that. I don't know if I would do that or not. Like if I was to go hunt down there, and I would love to go to like Obregon or something like that and duck hunt. But I was telling him, I was like, I don't think I would actually do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I could see myself shooting five or ten, and eating them or whatever, because pintails are by far the best duck to me. <clears throat> that and wood ducks. But I'm like. There's got to be a balance. There's a balance there. Like, yeah. I, I think that's, I just feel weird, like, doing that, yeah, just blasting I, away and yeah. piling them up. I don't know. I just don't, I don't think I would have a good feeling. You know what's crazy, what's crazy about that, now that we're talking about that, if you thought, stop and think about that's going on in Mexico, like, think about globally, you know, the Chin Chinese, man, yeah. are, are getting away with so much stuff to pollute the, the world and we have we have all these restraints on us, right? Which I I mean I some of them are I think some really are good, yeah, make sense. But then there's some that don't, and they're not regulated to the same standards that we are, right? But we're supposedly the big polluter, so that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, so there are other countries that do that. Just but I would say we're pretty well re regulated with the hunting. I mean, how yeah. many how many pintails can you get in a day? One. One. So yeah. yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. And and um I think it should be two. We've talked about this on the podcast before, but I think it, I was trying to find that comment, but I can't. Anyways. They're one of my favorite birds to look to, oh, look, they're to look they're, at. Yeah, to they're fly and Yeah, I mean uh, right there. they're just a like, their tail. They're kind of like a business duck to me, like a professional Yeah. Um oh, what's the right word I'm looking for? I don't know how to explain it. I mean that's, I, a, that's a nice one too. Yeah. That's like that pose right there is just I seen that on a Ducks Unlimited magazine and Eugene mounted that did a really good job. So it's a bummer too because I've shot pintails with way longer sprigs than that, but uh, I want to say that was my first one that I shot, hmm. and so of course I had. To I mean it. the way they fly and they they dive bomb. They're majestic. They're like a jet. Like they are a fighter jet. They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, 
pretty awesome to watch. Really. Yeah. I yeah. mean, one of my true loves is mallards, but like a pintail is just a very gentleman's duck. Oh, that's is that the word. That's the word I'm looking for. Like, I feel like it's just, I don't know. It's kind of a late duck, right? In yeah, way, I mean. Almost. Yeah, I mean. I mean, mallards are nice, but then wood ducks are beautiful. I think they're oh, more, they're they're more incredible. beautiful. They're more the beautiful and stuff than a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Ducks in general are just really neat. I mean, like. Yeah, some aren't as color- colorful as a wood duck and the m- colors of mallards, but like if you look at that buffalo head, I mean that's pretty cool. You know, it's it's just yeah. white and black. Yeah. But they'll get that iridescent like green and purple in their heads. So yeah. ducks, I mean, th- there's not any duck I don't like yeah. enjoy looking at. Not only to taste, but to harvest. To harvest, and then and then just to look at. I, me and Trask will go out there a lot in the off season, and and we'll uh, mm-hmm. take our spotting scopes and just look at them. Oh yeah, they're pretty. I mean, it's and that's what people that are non hunters don't have no they have no comprehension understanding they if you think about it they are the worst people that are on this planet earth and the biggest uh uh hypocrites of anybody because mm-hmm. they'll go right down there and they'll buy their beef and their chicken from the <laughs> store when they don't realize how and I, and I'm not being a weirdo here when I say this but if you see some of the stuff that goes on in those plants when they're taking, you know, when they're doing the birds, and the, it's pretty, it's gruesome. It's ugly. Gruesome. I, I've never been in there, but I can tell you this. I know a guy that actually worked in there. Uh-huh. We're talking for one of the local biggest <laughs> yeah. chicken farms. Yeah. You know who I'm yeah, talking about? Farms. Yeah, Foster Farms. Yeah, Foster Farms. Yeah, I don't care. I'll say Okay, so any, anyway, Foster Farms. And it's like, it takes a special kind of person to work in there. What For they sure. do to those chickens and the blood that's flying and the mess. And it's a color red that they're in there. All day. Yeah, like, oh my God. how You'd have to pay me some major money for yeah, that. Even and they go, ain't paying those guys jack. No, they're not paying them nothing. And they're the stuff that they go through. You know what I find interesting? It's kind of a side subject on this whole thing. You know, you talked about these... Liberals, <laughs> Peta, P-E-T- right? And I was gonna, yeah, P, yeah. So, isn't it interesting that any time you would see uh, something is said about animals and people harvesting, whether it's ducks or elk or deer, whatever, they make a big deal of it. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting? You haven't heard one thing about fakey Fossey. And from Peta, anyway, I haven't seen nothing anyway. Oh, about what he did with what those puppies? What he's doing with acid. Is he and, doing it right now actively, or well, is that in the past? Well, he was part of the and he's he is a person that has a big influence on funding these studies with the NIH, National National Institute of Health, and the acid and the the whatever kind of insect that was that actually they're torturing these animals. But you haven't seen one thing. Not one. Check them out. If you don't know about that, you find out if you, there's Who any... Who has information? Like, where can you look that up at? You know? You, you know, it's so much of stuff's being censored. I got stuff on my phone. Uh, but, yeah, you could just... You couldn't find it on Google I don't know, probably anyway. I don't know if you could even have Google it, it now. Yeah. Uh, it might, I don't even know if it's on YouTube now, but there are people posted what this guy But has. what were they doing to Puppy? Like, they were doing something to... Th- Somehow they restrained him, and they put these insects, so they actually were eating these dogs up. <sighs> yeah. For what? Uh, well, there, there, the one with the acid had to do some with the monkeys, I believe it was, wanting to find out what happens when they're tortured and then the pain that they go through... Like studying something to do with Morbid. that. I couldn't. Morbid. I it wasn't like I want to sit there and read all the details right. on this stuff. Like, come on, that is like the most cruel thing ever. You know, I mean, I, my feeling is like, what's crazy about that is a whole nother thing, and that's the whole abortion thing. They're killing. Yeah. You can call the fetus. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Okay, it's a person. Exactly. And you're murdering them. And isn't it interesting how Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson, basically the vaccines all have embryotic parts in them? Yeah. We're, That's we're baby talk parts. That. Yeah, so anyway. No, I, no, I don't no, want to get ahead. started on Go that. ahead, go ahead. So No, I mean, we're going to talk about that. that these people, you know, I'm a, I, it bothers me that it, people that do anything do it to bad animals. to animals. Because we don't do that, though. That's no, what, hunters you, don't do that. No, you don't do that. You don't may let them suffer like that. And again, like I said, we're not trying to sound like a bunch of weirdos uh, talking about what they do. But I would never... Okay, how they harvest the animals, that's, they do what they got to do, and that's fine. But what I'm saying is I can't stand the hypocrisy yeah. when this person is on their phone in the grocery store 
saying how bad we are as they're throwing ground beef and chicken thighs in their grocery basket. Mm-hmm. Get a clue. Yeah. Get a clue. What goes on there? You want to run your mouth? And now I know those pe- those same people would be at those factories and protesting and stuff like that. And I think there is some validity and truth to what the what um, they are fighting for because I have seen some things. I was like, dude, that ain't right. It's straight up. It's straight up about money, right? Like yeah. how they were doing the cows, and I've seen some of that stuff. And I'm like, even us as hunters, we're like, we would never uh, accept that or condone that at all. Um, now, everything else, you know, like we went out there. I don't remember. You had like 30 chickens or whatever that one time. And we went and took care of them and harvested them and put them in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Like that's part of, that's the cycle. That's how God created it to happen. They go back. We go back into the dirt and deer are eating the grass that yeah. our remains have caused to grow. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a cycle. Right. That's how God made it. But, yeah, these guys that, these thinking, I say tree huggers, but that's not even, I don't even know if that's really the proper term. But they go in there and they and they gripe about hunters and, and just tell us we're murderers. I've been called it. Cam Haynes gets called it. You would be if you're in it. I mean, we all as hunters face these things with these same people. You know, you know, last time I read the Bible, it says, you know, it says we people were created in the image of God mm-hmm. and uh, we're made after his image. There's no place that I've ever read anything in the Bible that talks about a chicken, a dog, a pig, right. any game animal is made in the image and likeness of God. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, my thing, my thing is it was created for our well-being, for us as as people to live on right and so one of the awesome things about you know game animals whether it's deer or elk or you know ducks or Mm -hmm. pheasant whatever i mean think about the food that they're actually feeding these animals that are contained in a you know in a in this lifestyle and the mixtures that are in the grains it isn't just i've actually read where it's all you know kind of Mm -hmm stuff that we wouldn't want to eat that's actually in there but it it actually goes through their bodies and if we're eating it come any chemicals that are in that food comes into our bodies too mm-hmm. so it's this chain of of events that happens and so the idea is to eat as clean as possible and therefore eating an elk eating a deer mm-hmm. eating a duck eating you know I, we're just not talking. We're not abusing things, okay? Exactly. We're not doing it just for pure pleasure. We're right. doing it because we actually, and and as a matter of fact, my freezer is pretty empty right now. And I, you know, <laughs> here here towards the end of uh, December, going to Arizona, uh, and I'm hoping to get some things in my. And and not only that, how good that meat is for you as far oh, as totally. the level of protein versus what you're getting. I mean, they're pumping these chickens full of water. To make them way more to yep. get more out of it. It's a, it's yeah. a, it is kind of a little. I mean, man, as a hunter and gathering your own food, it kind of is a little, not right. Yeah, really, because I mean, they're injecting, they're they're making the, they're giving these hormones and steroids that are growing them up insanely fast. Yeah, it's all about money. Yeah, it's so, production, and th- so it has gotten to a level that it shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, right? what what did we talk about in a? former podcast the love of money mm. is the root of all evil mm. now i i've been in business most of all my life and there is definitely you know the idea is to make you know to make a profit mm. as a business mm. but at some point there's also there's got, a line there's, there's a, a line moderation moderation again and making the money but see that goes into a whole nother thing too is if if we didn't have all these regulations on a business, yeah, then they could actually bring down the cost of the particular item. But because, especially in California here, I mean, think about this. When I came from Oregon, I paid, I believe it was $42 for my registration for two years. Really? My for ju- your vehicle? Yeah. So for, they used to do a two-year deal. Yeah, two-year thing in, wow. or- in, in Oregon. Oh, I, in Oregon. In, in Oregon. Okay. I don't know what it is now, but I'm sure it isn't the same as California because, like, tomorrow my my Jeep is uh, due my registration for one year is $455. Mm-hmm. And you got your Lexus like, SUV. That's probably more than it's that. It's the same. Is well, because it? it's older than your Jeep. It's, it's a 14. 18. Oh, Mine's it is. a 14. Oh, okay, okay. But my truck, when I first got it, was like six-something. Yeah. 
So that's what we're paying here. So whatever you're paying, <laughs> and they're is going. Probably, people are going. Oh my goodness! Don't yeah. go off the road when you hear that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. It's huh? Stupid, but yeah. Well, so. we'll we'll end this one here. We we didn't even touch one almost one thing <laughs> that we but but that's good though because that was a good conversation. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. We'll see you guys. I learned I learned more about what you actually do. Yeah. I know you did it, but I mean to be there and we haven't scratched you, the service. You know, you don't. I don't have the experience. So mm-hmm. unless you do, it's like good, I think it's good to hear it because yeah. I appreciate those guys that you know and girls that go mm-hmm. go and do that thing. Yeah. And We're gonna uh, have some on here too. We're gonna have oh, some ground awesome. medics on oh, here. That'd be great. <clears throat> and talk about. Excuse me. Obviously, there's things uh, with HIPAA that you can't, you know, personal protection that pff, the government doesn't even do. <laughs> but we still got to abide by yeah. that. We won't because obviously you won't put, put people's names, but we can still tell the stories because they're in the past. So we'll have some on here and it's, it's it'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. So, all right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.